good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October 13th meeting. I'd like to call to order. If everyone could please stay for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. did whatever they had to do to get to those survivors, pulled two of them from the plane and uh, ensured that they were and stayed with them until help could arrive. Uh, what they did was incredibly heroic and I'd like to introduce um, these two students and two alumni uh, to you and ask, gentlemen, when I call your name, if you'd come down. These are some very odd COVID uh, rules we're observing here, but if you would want to call your name, if you would come down and receive the plaque that we have at the table for you there, and then I'm yep. just going to come and ask you a few questions and talk with you a little bit. Um, so, Angelo Smerdino and uh, Mark Tamburo, if you uh, come down, thank you. These are our two students. <laughs> and then uh, two of our alum, alumni, Robert Malasetis and Michael Kupo, would you come down please? <laughs> the microphones will pick this up. We're so incredibly proud of what you did. Uh, this whole community is. Um, if you don't mind, I, I, maybe some of us would have some questions for you. I know I have one question. It's just, you know, what were you? When you first noticed, what, what made you first notice that something was wrong, and what were you thinking when that happened? Uh, nothing. Yeah. If you so, can speak as loudly as you can. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah. So the first thing we noticed was I've never seen a plane land in there. Apparently, it's pretty common. But um, so the first thing I saw was a plane coming in for a landing. And it was a seaplane. So I, I called over to him. I was like, "Oh, look at the plane!" And then we noticed it was going way too fast, skimmed across the water, and that's when it hit into the pier. Jumped right into action. Um, uh, other thoughts, other questions that board members might have? Go ahead, Cheryl. Uh, well, I just wanted to thank you and also commend you and ask. Uh, you know, the first way I heard about the event was through Twitter. Uh, it was tweeted out by one of one of the uh, athletic organizations. So I'm guessing your athletes in East Chester. And I just wanted to. Uh, here, if any of your um, kind of athletic training, your experience on teams, um, kind of helped you, helped inspire your action do you think? Our coach is really into himself. Yeah, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, 
you know, a lot of the, the interviews that I know me and him did and the news and like talking, the, that was like the biggest point for us was really talking about like our, our foundations growing up, our amazing coaches, our amazing like teachers, our amazing parents and, and loved ones and uh, like all of these guys are like brothers, we're all like brothers and their parents and that was like, it's just like a big collaboration of, of all those aspects that just grew us up to be who we are, good, good, bad, or indifferent. <laughs> um, but uh, that's really what just, that's the main point of what made us do just what, in my opinion, and what we all said, what every person should do in that situation. It's really, it's not heroic, it's just saving people or helping somebody who just needs help. That's all it is. And I played sports here as well. I played basketball and volleyball, and um, it's kind of, it's kind of, I don't know how to explain it, but in this situation, we, we did work as a team. It wasn't just like an individual effort. Like, I know it's hard to explain, but we did everything together. Other board members have any questions? I just did so. Um, like, thank you guys so much. I've known um, some of you, all of you, since you've probably been five years old. So it's so <laughs> wonderful to see um, grown up and doing this. So proud. Um, how often do you guys like jet ski over there? It's just like I know you probably would have been playing football and you guys might have been watching the games. Oh yeah. If it was a traditional year, but like, do you often jet ski there? Yeah. And so a lot. Like he's been he started. He started <laughs> like three years ago. He oh. really started. It. And I would just occasionally like ride his while he rode his uncle's, and then we all got me, Mark, and Rob all got ours this year. But we put like a lot of hours on them. We rode there like a lot. So it's not like we we're trying out a new like riding area or anything like that. And but um, if it was football season, I would have like practice or games. So kind of just like we just keep it busy and doing like as many athletic hobbies and activities as we can. So it's just something that we found like it's fun and and benefits. Yeah. Well, that also that also adds to the. The, I, mean, not, I guess it's confusion because we go there all the time and we've never seen a plane land in there. So the second we saw a plane, we immediately thought, like, what's going on? Wow. Well, you know, you really have exemplified, you know, um, great character and great citizenship and everything that we would hope to have instilled in you um, as a school system. You got to put it into practice that day, but we also know it came from your, all those around you, you know, your families, you know, your all those around you so um, we're just really really proud of you we wanted to take a minute to show that and uh, you know you demonstrated what it means to be evil strong uh, when you did that and we're just very 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 proud of you and uh, wish you all the best so thank, thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. from our governor uh, in, uh, that he has issued. And I think as you listen to the whereas is in this proclamation, you'll get some sense of what school board members do, what our school board members do, and what makes this such a noble work. Whereas each year, school board recognition week, recognition week is observed by more than 700 school boards in school districts throughout the entire state. And whereas our state's public education system is designed to meet the educational needs of all children and to empower them to become competent, productive contributors to society in an ever-changing world. And whereas school boards are currently facing the unprecedented challenges of a pandemic while working closely with educators to prepare our children to learn, and whereas members of local school boards are dedicated to children learning in community and devote many hours of service to elementary and secondary public education as they continually strive for improvement, excellence, and progress in education, 
recognizing that all children can be successful learners, especially when education is tailored to the individual needs of the child. And whereas local school board members are strong advocates for public education and are responsible for communicating the needs of the school district to the public and the public's expectations to the district by working closely with parents, educational professionals, and other community members, and whereas the members of New York's state local school boards respond to the educational needs of the communities they serve and help ensure the solid foundation of our school system, in doing so, these leaders help strengthen our state's educational system and improve future prospects for our children. And whereas during October 19 through 23rd, 2020, special activities and programs will be held in communities across New York State in observance of School Board Recognition Week, and it is fitting to join in acknowledging the commitment and contributions of members of local school boards. Now, therefore, I, Andrew M. Cuomo, Governor of the State of New York, do hereby proclaim October 19 through 23rd of 2020 as School Board Recognition Week. I can honestly say from firsthand observation that our school board here in East Chester does all of this and more. Um, you serve this community, community with integrity, you serve it with joy, and you are very much in tune, in my opinion, with the needs of the community and with the needs of the school system. And you are that voice, that bridge, and that guidance for the administration, setting the policy and the direction that we need in order to be effective and serve the taxpayers of this community. I want to take a moment and thank you personally for all you have meant to me since I've been here just a little over a year, and all that you've had to this community for many, many years as you've served in these rooms. And I'd like to offer my, my thanks and congratulations to you. It's all a labor of love. You get a certificate and you get a thank you, but really, truly, I know you do it because you care and you invest. And that's, that's what uh, it's all about. And um, really, all the time and effort you spend, we really appreciate it. And I know many in this community do as well. This entire community does. Uh, two other quick things as we move on from that. Uh, I want to just mention that uh, we have, I put a message out to the community on Friday night. Just to remind everybody to please wear, you know, your observe masks and distancing in public, and to remind you that we've got some reinforcing restrictions on this turf field here at, uh, behind the high school middle school campus. We ask with the sports season beginning and with all the activity that goes with it, that everybody be careful to observe everything that is on the post of rules and regulations and that we will be enforcing those. And the fourth thing and last thing is I want to just acknowledge, you know, we've heard from a lot of families, especially in the last week or so, um, about the desire to get kids back in school more. And I have to tell you, uh, my team and I, we would agree, we would love to have students back in school more. It is very difficult, particularly for our young children. Um, our teachers will tell you, our, our parents will, will tell you, and we will tell you as an administration, um, we would love to have our students in more. Uh, we, we hear the frustration, and we uh, will certainly continue to work and do everything we can to continue examining what might be able to be adjusted as we go along. We landed at this hybrid situation through a thoughtful deliberation. I want to just bring everybody back to a little bit of context. We spent months and months with a task force and, and a very lengthy process trying to understand how we can move forward, and in this, under the regulations that we are bound by, this was the plan that we came up with. We recognize that it is an imperfect plan. Uh, so we will always continue to keep an open mind. We will continue the dialogue with surveys and so forth. Um, one of the things that's happening in the world right now, and I, I'm in constant contact with uh, superintendent colleagues from around Westchester and beyond. And what I know is that all school districts are uh, being compared with one another uh, in terms of who's doing what and what models they have. The model we have is predicated on the conditions we have locally. We have a certain size of, of, of amount of square footage available for classrooms. We have a certain amount of budget allocated for staffing. And, and we have you know, a certain amount of transportation and busing available. Some communities don't have busing. Right? So depending on a district's unique situation with 
all of those factors, space, staffing, and budget, and transportation, those are four big factors that will drive what you're able to do. Uh, so taking our community's preferences into account, we develop the current system we have. Are there tweaks that we could make to it? Yes, but I will just say that everything has to be examined in terms of the cost-benefit analysis. Right? If you make a change to try to improve one thing, it will change other things, and those other things may be less desirable than what we currently face. So while I don't want people to think or believe that this is it for the rest of the year, we're going to be in this hybrid the rest of the year, and there's no changing it. I'm not digging in my heels, but I am telling you we're a month in, going into the fifth week. We now kind of understand what this model is about. We will continue to seek feedback from the community through our PTA, through other committees that we've set up, and we can also re-engage re our task force. We can look at the data, we can do some surveying, we can you know, get in touch with the more recent data points and how people are feeling, and we can move forward with that data and see if there's any way that we can marginally or incrementally improve you know, what we're doing. But um, one thing I want to mention, particularly around health guidelines. The health guidelines that we were given, that is commonly accepted as that is what we are following. You will find some districts who, uh, you know, through the use of plexiglass, or actually it's polycarbonate that you can use, uh, and through you know, putting more students, they've increased the density in their classrooms you know, using some of these things. But you know, as we have reached out, we're noticing that some of these districts were, were doing this, um, we, are, we are seeking renewed guidance from Westchester County Department of Health. And what we're hearing is that the interpretation that we have is probably the correct interpretation. It would be the exception to try to, when, when you must put people in a situation for for some specific reasons where you won't get the six foot density, you need the masks and the six feet. That's what they're asking for. So other districts have taken some different positions, and you know that is their prerogative to make those interpretations. I'm not judging it. I'm just saying you know that's their decision to make. The input that we have gotten from the Department of uh, the Department of Health it continues to be that you know it's it, that what we are doing now with the reduced density at six feet and masks. This is what they're asking. If we get different guidance, um, and we will continue pushing on that guidance, then uh, we will certainly act on it. But right now, we're not getting confirmation of anything different. In fact, we're getting confirmation that we're looking at it in a commonly accepted way is the way that they're looking at it. But um, again, we'll continue to probe and ask those questions. By the way, East Chester is not the only ones asking those questions. These questions are being asked by all the superintendents in the region. And uh, because you know, we're acutely aware that people are, are looking at what others are doing and asking, well, why is this one doing this and why is this one have a different density? Um, so whether it's you know using Wednesdays differently, whether it's you know looking at different ways to get more elementary students in, these are all things that theoretically can be done, but just realize it's a balancing act and it's a trade-off. As we look at them, we'll we'll give you the pros and cons of, of different possibilities. Uh, but right now, uh, you know, you're also seeing a spike in Westchester County cases, and it is significant. In fact, George Latimer, the county executive yesterday, on his um, Facebook page, uh, expressed ex some serious concern about the rate of infection and how it is spiking, and they're trying to dig into it and learn how they, what is the root cause and how they can reduce it. So, you know, at the same time, we feel we feel people's acute need to you know, get students in school more, and we agree. You know, we have to do it thoughtfully and carefully as we, we have to look at things thoughtfully and carefully to see if adjustments can be made. With the knowledge that you know, if we go too fast, do something that uh, puts, that, that increases transmission that we're going to wish we had. And we need to be very, very careful about that. So uh, that's all I'll, I'll say at this point. I want to thank those who've engaged with the district to uh, let us know of their preferences and their and their concerns. And we certainly hear you, and we will certainly continue to uh, look at what our status, always look at and see if we can make adjustments or improvements. Um, but at the moment, we need some more data, and we need to uh, take an incremental approach with a little bit more data. So thank you very much, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, in my report this evening. Thank you, Rob, and thank you for the recognition and the certificates of appreciation. 
They are greatly appreciated. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask Steve to move agenda items four through eight. Sure. Um, so I move the approval of the minutes for September 29th, 2020 Board of Education meeting. Be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the personnel agenda as attached. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby approves the placements as recommended by the Committee on Preschool Education and the Committee on Special Education. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby accepts the report of the independent auditor, R.S. Abrams and Co. LLP for the financial statements and supplementary information, the report on extra classroom activities fund, the governance letter and the management letter and related corrective action plan for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2020. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby approves the following donation, $25 donation from Brian K for the Carissa Company Scholarship. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby approves the Treasurer's Report for July of 2020. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby approves the Treasurer's Report for August of 2020. Be it resolved that the Board of Education approves the budget transfers of $10,000 or more for the month of August 2020. And be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby approves the extension for the out-of-district home-to-school contract <coughs> for the 2020 to 2021 school year at the NYSED approved CPI of 1.4%. And uh, be it resolved that the Board of Education, per the recommendation of the administration, hereby approves policy 8635, information and data privacy, security, breach, and notification. Okay. Uh. Tara, would you like to second it? I second it. Uh, discussion? I've got a question. Uh, I guess this is Lisa's Lisa question. Mm -hmm. On the... Uh, I'll mute yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm loud enough usually. But, uh, on the rates for the uh, substitutes, and I just happen to notice that, I, I know we raised it not long ago, but the substitute rate and the teaching assistant rate, in my opinion, are very close. And that's my first question. Uh, you know, should we consider you know raising that substitute rate to, to create a little separation from the teaching assistant rate? It's just a, something I'm throwing out there. But secondly, and, and this is for Rob after we approve this, could you tell us how you're doing with getting substitutes? this year because we know people are you know calling in sick and, and all that stuff so you could just tell us a little bit after that we vote on it okay but you know you don't have to answer the question today on the on the rates but it's just some saying it's something we might want to look at especially if I hear we're having trouble getting subs that's all so yeah to address your question about subs it's worse than ever absolutely um, uh, Kim had done um, a ton of recruitment to get subs Unmute, please. Unmute. I'm sorry. Here we go. Uh, Kim in my office had did a, a, a did a tremendous job recruiting for substitutes, and um, unfortunately, as we got closer to the start of the school year, they were fearful and rescinded and said they wanted to put their application on hold. We had many individuals that did that. We we have some of our subs that did return. Some of them that some of them are also they left us because they got jobs elsewhere. Um, because the market is theirs at this point. So it's probably the worst year yet uh, for subs. And it has really little to do with compensation. I'm sure if we offered more money, we might attract some more, but a, a big piece of it is fear and, and the, losing them to other jobs. Well, in light of that answer, I just want to throw out the possibility that uh, currently right now our sub rate play, pays less than unemployment. If somebody doesn't have a job, you know, they could sit home and collect money rather than come to substitute in Eastchester for five days. Maybe we should consider uh, a premium during this time of COVID while unemployment is high.
higher than normal, maybe to attract some people. I'm just throwing that out. So. Yeah, thank you. It is something we have talked about. Um, well, temporary thing. I'm yeah. not talking permanent. I'm talking, you know. I don't know that what we talked about was temporary, but, um, but generally the conversation that we've had has been, what's the market? And, and would raising those rates likely attract more folks? So it's a conversation where, you know, at the time we had the discussion, we weren't sure that, that, that it would have that effect. But I think it's always, um, you know, until you actually make a change like that, you really don't know. You're speculating, right? So I think it, you know, it's something we can continue to discuss. I appreciate you bringing it up. Uh, question for Lisa. Hey Lisa, I was just wondering on the budget transfers, um, that $100,000, is that like the bulk of it for this year or the tip of the iceberg? Yeah, that's the tip of the iceberg. That's the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I think you already approved one in July for a $100,000 transfer. Um, I, and there may have been one in September um, that's already, but we're, we're well through the $400,000 that we've already. Okay. Um, that we had set aside for COVID related expenses. And it's not all necessarily in a couple of specific codes, but it is in additional staffing, it's in additional um, cleaning supplies and things that, you know, we would normally put through a supplier maintenance code. Ed's just ordering more of, so it's not necessarily that it's, you can see it in a specific code um, because it's kind of hard to separate some of them, although I have been tracking some of that, but um, it's, it's sprinkled all throughout the budget the, the $400,000, but uh, yeah, that's, that is the tip of the iceberg. Okay. Sorry, my unmuting skills are not as good. Um, does anyone else have any discussion? Okay, so before I forget, can I get a motion? I mean, to vote, <laughs> I want, I, you know, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Okay, the, our future meeting dates are October 27th, November 10th, and November 24th. Do we have any comments from the public? If you do, you can raise your hand or throw something in the chat and we can going once, going twice, Sold to any comments from the Board of Education. Anyone have anything? Go ahead, Vito. Uh, just going back to our last meeting, and I know you mentioned earlier about the field and everything. Uh, my question is, have we investigated or looked into anything that we can do uh, as repercussions to people who take bicycles onto the field? Can we give them a warning? Can we suspend them? Can we confiscate their bicycles? Uh, you know, if someone spray painted the side of our building and we caught them doing it, there would be repercussions because they're damaging our property and our facility. Riding a bicycle on our field is damaging our property and facility and should have the same repercussions as spray painting on our building. And I just want to know if, if the administration is considering anything like that or you know what we're I know that we're trying to put some security in to keep people from doing it as a preventive measure but what are we doing about when people are still going to do it because they will still do it that's where I'm going I, I, I want to say repercussions of some kind yeah if everything was... within the law that we can do to protect our facilities you know, students can be held accountable, sure, for all those kind of things. The trick is catching them. The trick is catching them. And that's where we're trying to be proactive with it. But I don't, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, having the police, you know, come and, you know, they don't know at what level you can press charges for something like that, but you would have the police come and certainly give them a talking to. And um, you can, I, I believe, under the uniform code, probably could, uh, you know, behavior after school is on school property would be, you know, I would think fair game for something like that. You just have to, the problem is we don't, 
have any means really to catch them right now. But if you do, yes, it would be a conversation we could we can reinforce, particularly after such a period of time when we may not have security. I, no, I know, but we're putting in the security now to effectuate a change, okay, that they don't do it. But fine, we're going to spend the money on security. All right, now we catch somebody. And we catch the same person again. And we catch the same person again. Okay? You can have all the security in the world, unless you do something when you catch them, why even have any security? Sure. So I, I just, I, I, want, I want to hear something that we're protecting our property. Okay? What that something is, you guys could decide. I, I, you know, and I think you, you, you've identified what it is. You know, you know who they are. You, you progressive discipline. Progressive discipline could, can apply to that. And then um, another thing that we're looking at is seeing if we can secure the field better by, you know, having a portion of the fence that's only four feet tall raised and prohibiting and, and putting a turnstile in so bikes can't get in. If we can do that, then that's a more cost-effective way of deterring. But if you still had someone vandalizing, or you still had someone abusing, um, yeah, you can take legal action. You can take progressive discipline. You just have to catch them. Agree. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you brought it up. We did think about it since you brought it up last time. Thank you, Vita. Anyone else? Cheryl? Sorry, you have long time. No? All right. Um, all right, well, I do not think we need to call for executive session, so do I have a motion to adjourn? Vito? Cheryl, would you like to second? All right, well, thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful evening.